If you have been asking if healing is real, stick around and find out that healing is for real. And we don't mean maybe. My name is Tony. And I am Zin. And we are two witnesses and representatives of the miraculous gospel of healing. Bam. I'm boom. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Tony Myers. This is Zinil Fuigoni Mike. Go ahead and introduce the topic. So last last episode, we actually started to address some basic principles, foundational principles that Holy Brother Tony and I have been actually talking about. That believers have to be seem to be confused on. The last topic was on faith, you know, identifying that faith, using faith for validation. We left you with the thought that using faith for validation is actually considered evil works. Imagine that. When you're supposed to repent from that foolishness. <laughs> right? And step into good works. And good works would be the works that you are actually expressing because Jesus um, sanctified you. Sanctified you completely so that the Holy Spirit is now dwelling in you. And now because the Father is power, you are power. And all we need to do is to know is actually for you to now use the power and direct the power where you want the power to go. You exist as power. Today, we want to actually further pull that down into a little more understanding. So we're moving from faith, and Holy Brother Tony suggested, you know, we should speak about belief. What do we understand believing to be? Because many believers, imagine that we call ourselves believers, <laughs> <laughs> Many believers are supposed to believe. But that's your title. If you're a believer, then you're supposed to believe. But the, 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 the interesting thing is, is that <clears throat> because of so much saturation of doctrinal perspectives, sometimes Holy Brother Tony and I could actually sit down and speak normally, and we say we believe. And we could have 20 people in the room from 20 different denominations that they've come from. And these 20 people understand 20 different things. And it's very possible that the 20 different interpretations walked away, applying their interpretations, and they, and they didn't do, they're not doing what we, what we are doing. Now, one of the things in the Bible, one of the things about the scriptures is that every single concept that you encounter in the scriptures if you go back to its first mention in the scriptures, it usually gives you a definition. Right? Now, we didn't really go back to the first mention for faith, which is actually found in Deuteronomy 32, just in case you wanted to know. But there's Hold also... Hold on a second. Before you come up with this, uh -huh. let, let me make a statement that uh, people probably won't get because... People use faith and belief as the same thing. They're actually mm. two separate things. Right. But they want to use it as, they use it as, what do you call it? Um, um, synonym. Yeah. They use it as synonym. I'm saying you can equally use either or. There is a huge difference. Now, Zane will go with the first mention. <laughs> so, yeah, well said, well said. So, in the scriptures, what we have done in the westernized Christian world, which is why you, many many of our listeners are so confused, is that many of us have been taught that the New Testament could be interpreted independent of the Old Testament. Many of us have been taught that you can just read the Bible and just understand it, and if it, if that was so, then everybody should be healed. Every concept that is mentioned anywhere in the Bible starts in the Torah. 
right? It starts in the first five books of the Bible, which is what King James referred to as the Pentateuch. Every author of the New Testament, as well as Old Testament, are, sick, are people who come from the circumcised community. And in the circumcised community, if you all, if, if this has not been heard before, within the, circum the circumcised community, it is a norm for all members of the circumcised community to memorize scripture. And in that context, in that culture, we, so, so today we have Bibles in our hands. Everybody has a Bible. I have Bibles on my phone. I have about how many different versions of Bible on my phone. I have different physical texts. We have Bible concordance, all of these things we have today. And we take it for granted that these guys in the Bible had the same thing. This was not so. In the Bible, nobody had Torahs, screws, walking around the place with. To find the Torah, you need to go by the priests, especially in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, you need to find a synagogue. In the Old Testament, you go to the priest, the priest had the original Torah. I think the only, person, the only, the only other person that had a copy of that Torah was the king, who was, by law, was supposed to write all the Torah. Now, because the Torah was not easily accessible to everyone, the Torah was meant to be heard, not to be read. We read scripture today and try to make sense of it. When it existed before, it was meant to be heard. So someone would actually stand in the synagogue and read from the scroll. We have public readings. In the same way, in the Old Testament, the priest would read. Now get this. Because it was meant to be read, the scriptures are equipped with audible cues. Which means when you hear a term, you have if you so those who those who memorize the scriptures, they know the first mention of that term gives the context of its application. And so wherever it is mentioned throughout the rest of the Bible, their mind go back to where it's first mentioned, because where it's first mentioned, that's what the context is. This is the same context with faith. And, and do you, you know, I'm sorry for interrupting, but do you mm -hmm. know there's like very few preachers that even know about first mention? Brother, I would, I would even, I mean, this might be a harsh statement, but I would even argue that Westernized theology is oblivious to that fact. <laughs> We have I, very... I, I have mentioned, first mentioned to many people, and they have no idea about it whatsoever. Look at that. Which is appalling to me because, and with me, it was the Holy Spirit that showed me this. Wow. The first wow. mention. Um, wow. And so, but it came naturally to me. And I took it as a fact. And so it. here I'm thinking somebody that's gone to a cemetery and been taught <laughs> would have actually been taught about first mention. Right, right. You would assume that, eh? But they're not. You would assume that. That's why this the confusion. Because if everybody was working at first mention, we would have one definition. But it Instead is not so. of all these abstract definitions, and that word believe is very abstract. Yeah. Now we're going to solidify it. And with yes, all that, Zane, tell us the first so, mention. So the first mention is actually in Gen Genesis 15. This is actually with regards to Abraham, the father of the faith. <laughs> Right, it says in Genesis in Genesis 15 that Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him as righteousness. Now, let me just explain something here before we even unpack this. When you all hear that, or when our listeners hear that, what you heard just now is validation. You just heard Abraham had faith. And because of that, God counted him validated. 
but the context of righteousness there has absolutely nothing to do with validation. In fact, the type, the, the context of righteousness there means fully functional, means perfect in function, perfect in, 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 in a perfect species. It's function like a perfect species. And that's because faith was not something that you did. Faith was how the man in the garden existed. His entire mindset was a faith mindset. The way he functioned was an, an expression of faith. Everything that he did was an expression of faith. Right? So when you say, when it says, for example, Abraham believed God and was counted on him for righteousness, what is really saying, what is not saying, let me tell you what is not saying, is not saying Abraham believed God and because God, God approved him. He didn't say that. It is not saying that. What it is saying, is that Abraham believed God and God counted him as a perfect species because he is actually functioning. It's like a lion was given a raw. Abraham believed God and God counted him a perfect lion, a perfectly functioning lion. Right? Let's say believing God here is like the raw. Abraham, Abraham roared, and God said, and God counted it, to, counted it to him as a perfect lion because he can roar. See, see, see how you agree with this? Believe, <laughs> believe is the action that culminates because of the pre installment of faith. Exactly. Not, it is not the uh, indirect, uh, I want to say indirect. It isn't because our faith is validated. <laughs> We're not trying to validate our faith. It's because it's pre installed. We have it already. Yeah. Therefore, because it's pre-installed, now, because we believe, then automatically there's an action involved. Yes, sir. If I believe that I'm going to a baseball game, there is an action because of the belief. Which would, be, said, which would be, get my beer ready. And Paul says this in the New Testament, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Now, wait a minute. That should have at least gotten a laugh from you. <laughs> well, okay. I'll miss you laugh off. I'll miss you laugh for a second. <laughs> yeah. If Paul says this in, in, in the New Testament... Second Corinthians chapter 4, he says, we believe, therefore we speak. Just what the Holy Brother told he's saying, we believe, therefore we act. We believe there's a baseball game coming up, therefore we brought the bears. See, we believe, and it, as he rightfully said, it culminates into an action. It culminates into a decision. Right? Say that again. We believe... It culminates in a decision. Culminates into a decision. It so, is a choice. Yes, sir. It's a choice. It's a choice to act on that which is true. <laughs> right? Now, in Genesis 15, gives you another, another, another concept of belief in the context of believing that most believers bypass straight. And that context is mirrored in Hebrews 11 verse 1. And everybody quotes Hebrews 11 verse 1. They know it like a poem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? They quote it like a poem. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But and their the focus is on what? Not seen. 
Exactly. Exactly. Which is where we're Go going ahead. here now. <laughs> in, in Genesis, it says a few verses down that Iran believed God and, and, and it was counted unto him as being a perfect species. Righteousness, perfect species. Righteousness also here means the species of God. Right? He's counted unto him as God because he's doing what God does. Right? At the very beginning of the chapter, it says that Abraham received the word of the Lord in a vision. Visions are things that you do not see with this, your physical eyes. It's the unseen that was shown to Abraham. And that vision is called the word of Yahweh. In the Bible, in the Old Testament, this is not taught in Westernized Christianity either. Every time a prophet says the word of Yahweh came to me, he is not, he's not speaking about a voice that he hears in, hears in the atmosphere. He's speaking about a vision. Something that the physical eyes cannot see. It's a vision. Which is what Hebrews 11 verse 1 is speaking about. A vision is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So if you're believing, it's not something that you sit down and you say a hundred times and you're trying to shake yourself into it. It's simply your thoughts. See it. It's a vision. Prophets, you know, you got to understand the Bible also. The Bible is written by prophets. And Samuel himself said that a prophet in older times was known as a seer. So you have to see. <laughs> Right? And when you see a vision and you believe in the truth of the vision, mm -hmm. then what goes right along with that? Emotions. Exactly. Exactly. And that's the people, Christians in particular, will what we're talking about here. They, they, they will treat everything as separate instead of seeing how it's a combination. So you've got faith, you've got belief, you've got expectation. All these things are together. Yes, they are together. So we faith installed in us results in a belief do you have a vision mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which culminates in the emotional, and I'm going to use the word expectation, it culminates in the emotion. Yeah. So the emotion <clears throat> and the vision are integrated into each other. This is, this is exactly what Paul was speaking about in 2 Corinthians, I think in chapter 4, where he says, he says in, 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 um, in 2 Corinthians 4, as I mentioned, verse 13, that we believe, therefore we speak. Then later on in 2 Corinthians, he says very clearly, we do not pay attention to the things that can be seen because they are temporal, we live by the unseen. What he's speaking about is what the Bible calls the word of Yahweh, which is a vision. That is what you cannot see with the physical eyes. And that's the infinite verse. We walk by faith, not by sight. Oh, exactly. exactly. In other words, we walk by trust, not by our physical senses. Because exactly. The faith is already instilled. We believe, so we see the vision of the end. We have the emotion that's already happened. If I already, if I, if I have the vision that I am completely healed and healthy, then what elevated emotion? will automatically 
consume me. Gratitude, joy, um, freedom, satisfaction. So then, as I'm having the vision, the emotions are inside of me. That is true belief. And this is exemplified in scripture by prophets who are the seers. They have a vision. And there is no prophet in the Bible that does not treat the vision as the real realm and the physical realm as the adjustable realm. So their emotions are never to the physical things. Their emotions are to the visions. So you hear, for example, Elijah say, I hear an abundance of rain. He's not hearing that with his physical ears. He's exercising his senses to to what he is seeing in the spirit. And another point is this. They speak because, as Zane's saying, that's already happened. So they speak present tense. Yeah. They, it is not, it is not, I see that the rain is coming. Right. Or, <laughs> or I'm waiting to hear the rainfall. No. No, I, I hear I the rain. Hear, I hear an abundance of rain. And from the time he speaks that, now notes. Note, and, and I think Holy Brother, Holy Brother Tony and I want to slow this down here so this sinks into your mind. Note that he, in the context of the scriptures, prophets treat what their visions are as the reality. And when they speak they speak as though the vision is history. They're not trying to bring it to pass. They are making an announcement. They're not looking for validation. The word of Yahweh is sufficient. Now, some of you may ask, so how do I know the word of Yahweh? Prophets in scriptures are the covenant walking in our body. So once Yahweh says this, if they, whatever thought comes to their mind that is in line with what Yahweh says, is called the word of Yahweh or the vision of Yahweh. And they treat that as the real realm. The Garden of Eden narrative starts treating the Garden of Eden as a real thing. But if you read the text, it is, it is something that is done in the spirit and then breathed into the man. And then he acts on that like his history. Now, get this. This is why in the Old Covenant it makes a statement that if it does not come to pass, they are a false prophet. Yeah. Now, why would God say that? Because, one, because of who that prophet was. True, true. They made it (laughs) to come to pass because of who we are in spirit. And just, just, just throwing this in here, nobody in in, 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 in the New Covenant should fear being called a false prophet because you have the covenant. So you have As no we reason talked to about, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. You are sealed. You are righteous. That does not escape. The fact that proves that you're righteous, you're still alive, and you're the tabernacle. Yes, sir. That proves it. Right there. Right there. End Seeds. of story. No hesitation. <laughs> and so I'm... therefore, when you speak, with vision and exactly what we're talking about there is no questioning it it has to happen line drawn you're not waiting for it to happen 
And that's something that you, we will speak about in the upcoming episodes concerning rest. Because most people don't rest. And as that's because you have been Most taught, people are still trying to attain. They're still trying to attain. Most people have been taught to use the physical manifestation as proof. When the definition says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence or the proof of the vision. I leave that there. Let that, let that grind their gears over there. <laughs> <laughs> Be blessed. Be healed. Be a blessing. I want to add this real quick. What is that? Be. That means what we already are. Amen. Amen and amen. That is not me telling people become. No. That is true. Be the natural existence of a believer. Exactly. How do you like that definition? I love it. I just want to clarify that. I do that from time to time. When I say be blessed, you're already blessed. You basically say, wake up. Yes. <laughs> it is a reminder of what you what are. you are. All right. What you are. Boom. And bam. <laughs>